if you have the Holy Spirit and you're used to being in joy and the joy of the Lord, like life is never perfect, but you always have that joy. It can feel really foreign to you when you meet people who don't, even if they call themselves believers, but they clearly don't have like go to the source because you know they don't have joy. They lie, they manipulate, they use, they play games. And we're talking like grown people here, like people who should know better. And for the believer, it's always surprising, you know, because believers aren't jaded. Believers aren't out here like talking down on others. They don't need to stand on other people to make themselves feel better. They don't need to suck the energy out of other people because they go to the source and it's other people that use them as a resource. You know, it's like, Some, it's sometimes the believers will end up getting kind of sucked dry because they will let certain people kind of resource all that good energy. And if they're not like really firmly planted in the Lord, you know, they'll find themselves getting low on their own energy. And I don't say energy in a woo woo way. I say energy in and like like the Lord, like being in the word refuels us, it renews us, it replenishes us, it rejuvenates us. You know, this is literal, this is energy, it's what feeds us. The bread of life is what feeds the believer. The Holy Spirit keeps the believer. And when they find themselves unevenly yoked with somebody, that's why we're called never to be unevenly yoked because it's the stronger person in that relationship whatever kind of relationship that gets their neck broken, that gets used up, that gets used. So there's a reason we're called not to be unevenly yoked. It's, it's the stronger believer that always gets jacked up in the end. And because they can't, you know, they have a, an open heart. They want to help. They want to be there. They want to love. They want to support. You know, and so it's hard for them to not only understand and believe like this person is really like taking advantage of me, but then it's even harder to stop. Like when you see somebody in need, like usually the person who's in need, they don't even know they're in need. You know, a lot of people who are just like selfish and about themselves, they don't even realize like they think they're perfectly fine. They think everything's fine. Well, of course they are because they're getting all their everything they need from people, from other people. You know, they don't go to the Lord directly. So the Lord doesn't like the Lord chastises those whom he loves. And it's not that the Lord doesn't love these people, but there's a difference from being a son of God and someone who just claims Christianity once in a while, you know, a son and daughter, of course, you know, there's a difference when you have a relationship with the Lord and you just call yourself a Christian. There's a big difference there. And it's in, you know, it's in the fruit. You'll, you shall know them by their fruit. You know, believers have that fruit. They have that joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, and it's really, it's obvious, you know, people who call themselves Christians and don't have that fruit or bear any fruit, that's obvious too. And, you know, these people often, especially like the believers that call themselves Christians or the people that call themselves Christians and believers, but they don't have a real relationship with the Lord, they can end up kind of just like feeding off of those who do. It's either that or they're just miserable. And it's, you know, it's hard. It's like once you kind of get a taste of the joy of the Lord, <laughs> you know, you don't want to go back. You can now you know the difference between like what life could be and what life is without the Lord. But if you don't make the actual effort to have a relationship with the Lord yourself, that's only temporary. That's only going to last so long until you have to keep, you know, using and manipulating people to kind to kind of like suck them dry. And you can pour into someone and pour into someone and pour into someone and pour into and many believers do. They pour into someone until they have nothing left. And then what does that person do? The fake the fake person. That's what they are. They're fake. What do they do? They leave. There's nothing left for them. They sucked you dry. They don't care that your relationship with the Lord is now weak. They don't care that you, you know, you're all jacked up now. They just need to feed off of something. You know, many people call these people narcissists. They call them a lot of things like 
I just call it sad. Like I call it sad, you know. I find it easy to pray for my enemies, and these are enemies, because those who make friendship with the world are, have made enemies with God. And the enemies of God are our enemies. And that's why we pray for them. Because it is sad, you know. The believer can always pick themselves up off the ground. You know, a righteous man picks himself up every time. And they go back to the Lord and repent. Lord, forgive me. You know, I did it again. I let this person misuse me and lie to me. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a process. It's a really trying process for the believer because again the believer's heart's open they're not stupid like it's like you could even see what's happening but you just want to be there you you know that often these people these weak spiritually weak people have nobody else they could be surrounded by people but they don't have anyone else who is a real believer who is in the joy of the lord who will tell them the truth they got people around them that are pretend to have their back while they're just like you know letting them live a lie and it's scary and it's sad to see so the believer is always there like trying to help but as at some point absolutely the lord will come and just straight up just take the believer out of this situation because he's not going to have his children constantly pouring into someone who is just using them he can't like he's a good father he will allow this to go on for a time hoping that the non-believer the fake person repents finally realizes like this isn't right you know but after a while he has to make that separation there to protect his child you know he gives everyone that's why often you know it's the, the believers who suffer you know they suffer greatly because loving people the way Jesus does is trying you know real agape love can be trying it's not always it's la 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 it's not always like that sometimes it's a lot of pouring into others and if you don't you know you're a resource to others so if you don't go to the source directly like you you end up jacked up yourself if you're not in your word getting renewed you know then you're getting jacked up so it's it's a whole process you know i the believers learn to have because they, they're not they can't have a hardened heart you know they can't be spiteful they can't hate they can't look down on anyone. So it's like they just end up kind of, you know, getting ripped away from the situation and then praying from far away, which brings me to my next point. This was actually recently described to me as something called the feelers anointing. And some people have this, some believers have this, where I thought I was just losing it for a while. Like I would just have something come over me like, like a wet blanket, real heavy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this? Like, I'm just used to being in the joy of the Lord. Like, la la la. And then all of a sudden this heaviness comes over me. Even a physical pain in my body. And I just like, I'm like, Lord, what's going on? Like, I don't know what's going on. Feeling like I did something wrong. And it's actually a burden from the Lord to pray for someone else. And you go to the Lord and you ask him, you know, and he will let you know who needs prayer one way or another. You know, so I, you know, because this would happen to me and I'd look around counting my ducks. I'm like, and all, everything's all my stuff's in a row. You know, I don't have any reason to be upset. And it was actually like a prayer request, like a spiritual type thing for someone else. Like the Lord wants us to intercede for someone else. And it's called the feelers anointing. And it is difficult if you don't know what's going on. It is, you know, I don't, I wouldn't claim to know everything about this. I'm kind of looking into it, but it's not, there's only so much you can learn about these certain anointings like that believers have found over the years through revelation. It's not something you'll find directly in the Bible, you know, but it's, it's something that many, many people will experience, you know, especially more spiritually sensitive people, a lot of prayer warriors. And so, yeah, you know, it's. Sometimes these non-believers who formerly kind of sucked you dry will end up, you'll still find yourself praying for them. You know, you'll still get a burden from the Lord once in a while to pray for them. Because again, many of these people never learned the lesson. They never repented and turned to the Lord. Repentance is more than words. It's, you know, it's by your actions, your change of actions, you're turning your life to the Lord. So many people end up never doing this. So... 
that burden still falls on you to pray. The Lord won't, won't incline you to go like be all up in their face, you know, but he'll incline you to pray. And because the people need it, you know, people need prayer. Even the people, you know, again, they had plenty of time to repent. And after a while, the Lord will even cut that off and just tell he, the Lord will absolutely tell you to stop praying for someone. Absolutely. Because the Lord only gives so many chances. You know, I find myself often praying for mercy for that person. You know, I encourage you to pray for mercy on, you know, the people in your life that have sucked you dry. You know, because you probably still, you know, you still have love for them. You still want the best for them. And whatever their choices are, you still pray for the joy of the Lord to fill them. You want them to have what you have found in the Lord. It's just many people are just so far gone and that the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. And you could call yourself a Christian all day. If you don't live by the word, you're a non-believer. And that's not an insult. That's just, you know, that's just common sense. I mean, talk about naivete, you know. It's usually there those who have to like down other people who are just most down themselves. You know. But we don't, we don't treat people like that. So people just kind of look at us like, we don't know better. <laughs> anyway, um, that's the feeler's anointing. So sometimes you'll feel like a physical pain in your body. Sometimes you'll feel a heaviness and just go to the Lord in prayer and ask him. You know, and often these people are no longer in your lives because for a long time they were in your lives and you had relationship with them. It doesn't have to be romantic, just relationship, you know, and and you kept them in prayer every day, all the time. And they still didn't turn to the Lord. And the Lord took you away. And then they kept going. They still haven't turned to the Lord. And the Lord will give you a burden to pray for that person. So you do. And after a while, the Lord will even take that away. So pray for mercy. Pray for mercy on the people. You know, the fakers in your life. Because it's not, it's not a disrespect. It's the truth. You know, these people lie to themselves. And they don't understand that. Not only do they lead themselves to the lake of fire, but they, they're wasting their lives. Like a joy, outs a, a life outside of the joy of the Lord is, is a wasted life. 